Welcome to NIF Conversations. I am Ramachandra Guha and we in each episode discuss a book written by a fellow of the New India Foundation and today I have with me Indira Chaudhary who's written this wonderful book Growing the Tree of Science which is an institutional history of the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. So thanks Indira for being with us and um, uh, first of all when you think of the TIFR of course you think of uh, several individuals and most importantly Homi Bhabha and uh, it's hard to think of a modern Indian uh, who had so many extraordinary interests as him. But he, would you say, despite his interest in music, in art, he was essentially a scientist? Well, he was an unusual scientist. Though he was essentially a scientist, I think what is interesting about him is that if you look at his institute, he has early Husseins, uh -huh. he has uh, Kishan Khanna, he has the Pro Bombay progressives. So, there's quite a lot of art that is included within his institution and that was criticized. In fact, it was criticized in parliament. Because he spent public money on it? or spending money on yeah. it. Uh. But uh, his thing was that I'm spending just 1% of my budget and he had Nehru's uh, permission to do that. And I find that what he's doing in the early years of the institute is also taking the scientists off to see art exhibitions and Mulkraj Anand writes about that saying uh -huh. you were really the complete man because you did this for your scientists. So in my book I talk a bit about how this was also training them in this larger international uh -huh. uh, arena to which they will now belong so uh -huh. they can discuss art as well as science, you know, uh, it's, it's a part of that, it's a subtler pedagogy. And he, I mean, this is the 1940s and it's 10 years later in 1959, I think that C.P. Snow gives his famous lecture on the two cultures, saying the scientists yes. and people in the humanities can't talk, but Baba is already making them talk making uh, early on. Yeah. From 50s onwards, he's collecting, uh, you know, paintings and uh, Hussein's famous mural called Bharat Bhagya Vitata is in, uh, in TIFR uh, today, which Hussein, when I spoke to him, was very, very proud of it. Uh, he said, you know, as a young artist, nobody really cared where I worked or what I did, but yeah, Baba gave me a room okay, and uh, I was in that room. I took two years only because I could enjoy that. Uh, and I did this uh, mural and I would interact with scientists. So he was trying something I suppose there is a kind of Indian parallel uh, to Baba. Clearly he and Raman are different because Raman is all about science. But someone like P.C. Mahanlovis, the statistician and physicist who sets up the ISI but is interested in Tagore, is interested in literature and also has an international perspective. I think what is common to uh, Mahanlovis and Baba is that they both wanted to set up a world class institute in India. Absolutely. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. I, I would. Though I think they end up having clashes later on and yeah, they're not yeah. quite him. You know, Malanubis is the senior scientist right. and but Baba is trying to grow something and I uh -huh. feel his mentoring of young scientists yeah, yeah. at that uh, you know in the forties and fifties yeah, is yeah. really quite quite different and he gets very busy with atomic energy, that's mm. when the scientists are not meeting him as often mm. to mm -hmm. discuss things. So I think, you know, that happens because, you know, you have this figure of Baba who's trying to do everything, you know, meet the Prime Minister, go and do his atomic energy work. And yeah. at that point, you asked a question about whether he was primarily a scientist. Oh. He stops publishing in 54. Okay. So that is the end, I mean, he's quite clear and this is what even people at the institute say that, you know, what one thing about him was that he, uh, when he stops publishing, he even begins to address himself as Dr. Bhabha and no longer Professor Bhabha. Okay, okay. He was professor, uh -huh. but he says, you but know. still has the capacity to uh, recognize brilliance in young scientists and nurture them. I mean, yes. that's, so he may not be publishing himself. But he still has, he builds an institute of uh, quality which is so rare. Yes, and he is there every Friday for the colloquium. Uh -huh. Whoever's giving a colloquium, he's there, he's asking them questions. So 
the institute remains very dear to him. Yeah. And after 54, if you look at the 60s, Obaid Siddiqui or Govind Swaroop, these are people he hires. In and I think we should uh, say a little bit about them to uh, the viewer who may not know. I mean, Obaid Siddiqui yeah. is India's preeminent biologist and Govind Swaroop, India's greatest astro, uh, yes, astronomer. They're and, they're uh, and they're both found, in a sense, mentored by Baba or brought, yes, brought back from abroad, back. from abroad. They could have great careers abroad and they come back. Yeah, yes, yeah. They, they come back, back and, and what, what is interesting is Siddiqui is trying, I mean, he writes to SN Bose, he writes to various institutions, but it is Baba who writes to him first. Uh -huh. Similarly with um, Govind Swaroop, they write to various institutions and it is Baba who gets back immediately and tells them, you know, you can come back. We will, you know, support your project and of course Govind Swaroop is coming back to build this massive instrument. Yeah. Like, you know, it, it does take something to say, come here. That's and right. And, it, and you said, so he builds his TIFR, Baba, and then he brings in people, Govind Swaroop and uh, uh, Obed Siddiqui, who uh, then nurture their own world-class institutes. I mean, we are, we are in Bangalore and the National Center for Biological Sciences, where you worked, and which is arguably our finest science institute, is a kind of grandchild of Baba, you could say, because, yes, yeah, yes. You, you could say that, yeah. Yes. yeah. You know, and one of the things, and this is one of the arguments in my book, that if you say that your institution has a legacy, yeah. for the legacy to be really alive, you need to reinterpret it. That's you right. need to make it your own. And yeah. Siddiqui does make it his own. Yeah. And he begins, when I'm talking to him about NCBS, he says, you know, one of the things that people do often in India is they look for their own clones yeah, and yeah. they start, uh, yeah, you know, building yeah. an institute that yeah. will only... Uh, you know, we were talking about uh, Baba's ability to find high quality scientists abroad, bring them back and let them grow and you know, further grow the tree of science uh, in, you know, in multiple ways. But there were also people in his institute uh, with whom he had uh, differences. For example, in your book, you talk about the great uh, mathematician and historian D.D. Kosambi, who started as a mathematician, is more famous as a historian, worked in TIFR, but I think the dynamics didn't really work. Well, there were complicated reasons for that. Right. One, as I've tried to show, that what happens in TIFR is that you have Baba and you also have K.C., K. Chandrasekharan, Hmm. who is growing the mathematics school hmm. Hmm. and uh, actually encouraging lots of young mathematicians to you know take certain questions forward and they really become cutting edge quite quickly he joins in 49 and by the 50s they're really highly exp you know uh, uh. respected kosambi had joined the institute in 45 uh. and he was even at that point he continued living in pune Oh. and coming every day to uh, TIFR and uh, he would never stay back for any anything right, right, you know, right. that needed him to yeah. stay back. But what happens um, is that he does interact with the early cosmic ray physicists, helps them with you know statistical analysis and he's pretty much left to whatever he wants to do. The school of mathematics which grows from 49 become something that has a focus yeah, yeah. and they find that Kosambi is not quite within with you know them. with them but meanwhile Kosambi who regrets this doing this later also publishes in um, a paper which in which he says that he has solved the Riemann hypothesis uh -huh. and obviously this uh, group is really very upset mm -hmm. And they start, uh, you know, telling Baba that, you know, we feel very ashamed that this right. has happened. I mean, the, the way this <coughs> institute has nurtured the idea of how you do science, right, right. how your facts are checked, what, what is, you know, what is a review? We'd like this to be reviewed. Is it true that he's solved this uh, particular hypothesis? And Kusambi's paper is then taken and it's reviewed by, uh -huh. you know, mathematicians in Princeton 
and elsewhere and they say no this is not solving the Riemann hypothesis. That paper was published in um, the Indian Journal for Stat uh, Agriculture, Agriculture Statistics. Statistics. Uh -huh. And so it is, place, you know, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's completely, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, it's yeah. it's uh, it's seen as a false claim, and they're yeah. very ashamed of it. Uh, Bhava doesn't renew Kosambi's uh, contract well, I, uh, at that point. He's not thrown out, but he's not his contract. But yourself, you could say that you know uh, that frees Kosambi for historical work, at which he's probably better. Yes, than, yes, you know, like. but. but but you know, it is yeah. something that rankles, and the way the institute talks about its legacy, it talks only about Casey. Uh -huh. It doesn't talk, talk about, about Kos uh, Kos Kosambi. Kosambi at all. And of all. course, they produce so many mathematicians. Since you know, uh, uh, the TFR is uh, and soon going to be seventy years old, mm -hmm. and it is it's rare in India uh, for uh, to make uh, to set up an institution of high quality that outlives its founder by so long. It'll be 40 years since uh, Baba died. Absolutely. Right. Or, uh, and, uh, or 50 years since Baba died. 50, 50 years since Baba died. And so, you know, one could argue that, uh, of course, he was helped by Nehru, uh, his special relationship with Nehru. But what are the lessons for institution building in India? I mean, why are institutions like TIFR so rare? I mean, that, would you like to say a little bit about this? Well, one of the things that, you know, while uh, doing not only this book, but other institutions that have helped set up archives for, I noticed that uh, TIFR was special because the individual was given a place. Okay, yeah. The individual didn't get lost in this, you know, larger, right, right. Uh, you know, scheme uh, of things. Yeah. And I feel there was also the finances to support research. Uh -huh. Huh. which may not be the case any longer. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mm -hmm. think, you know, mm -hmm. science institutions are really right now very, very worried about their funding. But I think you find that um, that was probably one of the reasons that people felt a little free to carry on research. And I think, I suppose, that way. is, as you, uh, to go back to what you said, you know, he, Baba did not want to produce clones of himself, you know. Uh, and in that sense, uh, your book, I hope is very widely read uh, because of what it says, the richness of his research using oral histories and uh, archival stuff, uh, uh, but also as a, as a kind of template for uh, how to run high quality institutions in India. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, that uh, remained because one of the things, and this was more to do with NCBS, and this has to do with the registrar of a place where you were, which ah. is uh, CSSSC. Ah. And I remember when I was in NCBS, I, uh, invite, I, I went and met um, Sh Shushanto uh, the Ghosh, registrar, yeah, the yeah. registrar yeah. and I said, come and see this institute where right. I am. Right, right. And he came and I was wondering, you know, what will he say about it? And he looked at it and he said, you know, in India we've never learned how we should spend the money. Uh, we often want to, you know, be very uh, tight-fisted about spending on the institution. Uh -huh. And most institutions end up looking really like PWD places. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And he said, you know, this is so beautiful that they have procured the money uh -huh. and they've spent it and uh -huh. people feel very comfortable. Which, and, uh, and I think, you know, that there was something there he was telling me. And I feel that Baba, when he's, you know, nurturing the gardens, saying my scientists have to uh, get out of the lab and walk yeah, by yeah, the sea, yeah. there is some thinking about the lives they lead outside of their labs. Yeah, which, which, can, yeah, which can then go and enrich the life in the yeah, lab too. You know, because yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, that is something that I feel TIFR kept. And, uh, you know, you find that there is a lot of thinking around what is the welfare of the scientist, what is that space that you know you'll give him? Well, thanks so much, Indra. Thank you uh, for being with us, and thank you above all for so richly documenting the history of uh, Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. And, thank you, uh, because well, you know without the NIF, I don't think this. Would no, be but it's, it's 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 a great privilege to have published it, and we hope that it'll inspire other such books of high quality Indian institutions. Thanks. Thank you so much.